Hello everyone. This session gives you an overview of uh, again another uh, single membrane vesicular uh, organelle uh, which is the peroxisomes. So let us look at the learning outcomes of the session. Peroxisomes are membrane bound vesicles that comprise oxidative enzymes and so they are also called as oxidative microbodies. Peroxisomes are reported to have about 50 different enzymes, in fact more than 50 different enzymes and uh, these 50 different enzymes enable the peroxisomes to carry out multiple functions thereof. In the process of metabolizing several different substances such as amino acids, urates, etc., they produce hydrogen peroxide as an intermediate which uh, is then of course uh, converted to water and so uh, this is the reason why this organelle is also referred to as peroxisomes or is referred to as peroxisomes. Peroxisomal dysfunction has led to diseases such as Zellweger syndrome and adrenoleukodystrophy that is ALD. First let us look at and understand the structure of peroxisomes which is very simple. So as you can see in this electron microscope uh, picture, you see that these peroxisomes are uh, microbodies just like vesicles and they are associated very closely with the endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria. In fact, uh, peroxisomes are to a great extent in terms of its function also associated with mitochondria because there are several metabolic uh, pathways that happen similar in both mitochondria and peroxisomes. So these are simple vesicles of a diameter of uh, anywhere from 0.1 to 1 microns. So the size can vary depending on what uh, or how much uh, um, metabolism is happening within the peroxisome. They arise from other organelles that is uh, they can arise from Golgi, they can arise from ER, they can arise from mitochondria and uh, uh, what is observed is that from pre-existing peroxisomes one can get a new peroxisome. So biogenesis ha can uh, happen, uh, this organelle can show biogenesis which is again very similar to mitochondria because bio mitochondria can also uh, you know uh, carry out biogenesis. So these peroxisomes have been densely stained because of the presence of catalase. Now, uh, what, is, what, is, what is very clear is that in peroxisomes, most of the um, uh, um, reactions that happen are a two-step pathway that convert oxygen, if oxygen is a co-substrate in the reactions, into water. So as you can see, there are several oxidases that are present in the peroxisomes which are able to oxidize a substrate and in the process of oxidizing a substrate, the oxygen is getting converted to hydrogen peroxide. This hydrogen peroxide is then broken down into oxygen and water by catalases. Thereby, because this is the site of synthesis and degradation of hydrogen peroxide, this, this um, um, organel is named as the peroxisomes. Now, it has also been understood that uh, peroxisomes can be arising from different organelles. So here you can see that, you know, from endoplasmic reticulum, you can have the uh, peroxisome existing or uh, just getting derived. And then further what happens is that this peroxisome will take up several proteins from the surroundings and from other organelles and become mature. In fact, in the plants, what has been observed is that many of the peroxisomes get converted into a specialized organelle, which is called as glyoxisome, and within which you have the glyoxylate cycle happening. While many remain as peroxisomes, and in the peroxisomes, you can have photorespiration happening. As you can see in this picture, this is the peroxisome, and the peroxisome is able to take up several different constituents from different organelles. So you can see how it can take certain, um, um, uh, it can have certain uh, 
vesicles or molecules coming out from the endoplasmic reticulum and fusing with the surface of the uh, peroxisome. So you have um, uptake of several different components from either the endoplasmic reticulum or from the mitochondria or from other vacuoles. And then you have on the surface of the um, peroxisome several different transporters. And these transporters are helping the peroxisome to take up different constituents and get matured into, a, into an organelle that can carry out several different oxidative uh, reactions. So several transport proteins enable uptake of different proteins from different organelles to become mature and functional, which is why it is said that peroxisomes are obtained from other organelles because the final constitution of the peroxisome is thanks to all these different uh, components that are taken up by the peroxisomes. So let us look at uh, some of the major functions of peroxisomes. So uh, one of the major function that is that the peroxisome carries out is oxidation of very long chain fatty acid and branch chain fatty acids. Now, one already knows that in mitochondria you have oxidation of fatty acids happening. And so uh, it is likened to the mitochondria because here also you can see that fatty acids are getting oxidized. So you can either have beta oxidation for very long chain fatty acid, uh, fatty acyl CoA, or you can have the alpha oxidation for branch chain fatty acyl CoA. And that gives rise to several different acyl CoAs. Now, uh, in the long run, therefore, what is understood is that you have the VLCFA and the BCFA getting oxidized. Now, in the process, you can have reactive oxygen species being formed, and those reactive oxygen species are metabolized thanks to the presence of catalase and other enzymes. One can also have uh, the uh, synthesis of phospholipids within the peroxisomes or on the surface membrane of the uh, peroxisomes because of the presence of acyl dehydrogen <coughs> DHAP uh, 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 synthase. So this DHAP acetophosphate um, is able to you know uh, help in the synthesis of phospholipid. One can also have synthesis of plasmalogen which we know is a phospholipid again only thing is that it has eth ether uh, uh, interactions. So these plasmalogens are uh, very important in the formation of the myelin sheath. And it has been observed that if plasmalogens are not formed properly, then it can lead to neurodegenerative disorders. One also observes the synthesis of bile acids within the peroxisomes. One has also certain enzymes of the HMP shunt to enable the peroxisomes to carry out uh, even uh, reactions pertaining to the HMP shunt. What has also been observed is that uh, the peroxisomes are able to detoxify several xenobiotics and in fireflies, luciferase, which is responsible for production of the luciferin that gives, light to the, uh, that gives rise to the glow in the fireflies, have also been present or found to be part of the enzymes of the peroxisomes itself. So from this, you can understand that you have multiple different types of pathways that go on inside the peroxisomes because of the presence of uh, a lot of different uh, enzymes within it. One also therefore can easily understand the fact that if any of these enzymes are not functioning properly, or if the peroxisome is not functioning properly, then you can have diseases associated with peroxisome, of which there are two diseases which are very uh, common. One is what is called as the Zellweger syndrome. The name Zellweger syndrome comes from uh, Dr. Uh, Zellweger, who was a pediatrician and who had studied this disease extensively. And he was the one who suggested that this disease is because of the uh, dysfunction of peroxisomes per se. Now, this was this is an autosomal recessive genetic disorder, and in fact, what has been observed is that there are different in, uh, genes that are present that contribute to 
this uh, uh, syndrome and uh, because of that you have neurological abnormalities you can have visual abnormalities you can have liver abnormalities you can have myelin related abnormalities when you're looking at neurological abnormalities you can have hypotonia where the uh, muscles are not properly toned and you can also have uh, with respect to liver cirrhosis and we all know that whenever you have myelin related abnormalities hypotonia or cirrhosis then it increases the chances of fatality so therefore zellweger syndrome is something that uh, has been studied extensively especially to uh, kind of uh, decrease the uh, death in children uh, what has been understood is that the zellweger syndrome is because there is some abnormality in the peroxisome biogenesis and uh, the maturation of the peroxisomes is affected so what has been uh, observed in various studies is that the peroxisomes may be present but they may not have all the required set of enzymes within it because there may be certain transporters present on the surface of the peroxisomes which are not able to take up uh, proteins and therefore uh, the peroxisome is unable to mature into a completely functional uh, organelle. So thereby you can have the Zellweger cyst syndrome happening. So it is not because of just one protein, it can be because of several proteins. Uh, one example is say for example, PEX1 gene is affected and so uh, this is not able to take up the proteins from the cytosol and therefore you cannot have a proper peroxisome being formed. Another disease that is associated with peroxisomes is the adrenoleukodystrophy, what is uh, commonly termed as ALD. So this disease is because of a single enzyme or protein deficiency in the peroxisome and that enzyme is the transporter of the very long chain fatty acids. So we all know that the very long chain fatty acids are metabolized inside the peroxisomes but if the transporter of VL uh, CFA do not function properly then the very long chain fatty acids are not taken up by the peroxisomes and hence what happens is that this starts getting accumulated especially in the brain and it affects the myelin sheath. So therefore uh, uh, it leads to ALD. A movie named Lorenzo's Oil was uh, made just to address or just to kind of um, showcase that there is a disease called adrenoleukodystrophy although what the movie basically focused on was trying to look at for a cure for uh, the disease and uh, uh, um, uh, this is based on uh, the boy uh, who is actually suffering from adrenoleukodystrophy uh, Lorenzo and uh, the parents in the movie were um, were shown to be uh, uh, shown to have discovered a mixture of uh, fatty acid fatty acids uh, fatty acyl oil and this mixture was uh, of oil was shown to uh, you know decrease the progression of the disease per se so it uh, basically tried to show how involved the parents were in trying to find a, a, a cure for um, Lorenzo who was basically suffering from ALD but in reality most ALD patients are treated uh, by bone marrow transplantation so they are uh, basically correcting um, the uh, defect itself where um, be because of the transplantation the enzymes that were that is deficient is being synthesized or it is also treated by LOVA statin uh, which is effective, which has been effective as a drug. So let us make the conclusions. Peroxisomes are vesicles that are closely associated with the endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, etc., with the ability to take up proteins to mature into functional peroxisomes. The peroxisomes are reported to contain 50 to 60 different enzymes, enabling the organelle to carry out multiple functions such as oxidation of very long chain fatty acids, synthesis of plasmalogens, etc. One of the characteristic feature of peroxisomes is oxidases and catalases converting oxygen to water with the intermediate being the toxic hydrogen peroxide. So this is a reactive oxygen species 
which is taken care of by catalases. As it has been associated with several metabolic pathways, deficiency of several proteins or even a single protein can lead to diseases, especially neurological disorders. So peroxisomes, also known as microbodies, are present in both animals and plants. These contain on its membrane several transport proteins that not only enable the peroxisome to mature, but to also take in substrates. Thank you.